I bet if he didn't have the pirate warden and he had the new shadow warden, this warden wouldn't have looked at this town hall and said, I'm about to end this man's whole career. They are about to kick into this. It is Tribe Gaming versus MSE Sports. This is the lower bracket finals. The winner of this will move on to face the Queen Walkers in the grand finals. And here we go. Excosist is live. Attack of the board. Starting off with a Queen Charge into Lala with a Flame Flinger. Starting with a Flame Flinger in from the far right side of the base there with a Giant and a Yeti. The Yeti will probably die and have the Yeti Mice jump the wall and take that Mortar down if the Flame Flinger doesn't end up taking it out through the Archer Tower, which I think the Yeti Mites are going to jump directly forward there and take that Mortar down and keep that Flame Flinger nice and safe. There we go. Got it down. Also with the damage of the Fire Spirit striking at the Archer Tower. Did a good job. Moving there pretty quickly with that Yeti just clearing the way. All ground skellies potentially that could have potentially been there are down, and he'll have no problem pushing his way in. The queen trying to race this flame flinger into the base to get into the range of these expos and keep that flame flinger safe so it can get even more value after the initial value out of the scatter shot. But he'll push his way into the defensive queen, freeze up the single inferno with the defensive queen, rage up again, right in the line on that rage, but gets it down in time, takes the defensive queen out, drops out that CC. He's still got more CC that he's got to get down, though. He just got the head hunters out. They got a lot more in there. He's got another poison on standby, and he just used the freeze to lock up the head hunters, but the queen is taking the expos. The king finally to go to the artillery compartment. He needs a little support there for that king as he drives his way in and. Single Inferno will lock on and deal some heavy damage to him. The World Champion will join. And the Queen will fight out the rest of the CC. A jump will carry back to the Town Hall. She's chasing the Lava Hound right now and veering way off to the north side. Pulls her into the Single Inferno. So the King needs to hurry up and get in there. As the King takes over the Tanky. Though the Royal Champion picked up the Tanky. But the King takes the Single Inferno out before the Royal Champion gets burned up. Lala starts in the top side. Dragon Rider and Balloons come out of the Flame Flinger and will join in. Dragon Rider takes all the red bombs in the core of the base there before the balloons were in range to get struck. And that takes out a lot of potential damage on this back end. But the Queen makes her way back over the Town Hall. She locks onto it and will take it down there inside of the rage. Ward ability basically swag at this point here. Excosis with an RC ability still attacked here will easily close this one out and lock in the first triple of the war here. Tribe Gaming comes out swinging. Nice, uh... Almost swag raw champion ability. They literally could have swagged it. Let's be real. He could have swagged it. <laughs> Maybe he could have swagged more than just a raw champion this attack. Elec will kick it off here for MSE Sports. We got ourselves a Super Bowler Smash. With a line of Infernos down the middle of the base here. In line with the Eagle Artillery and the Town Hall. With scatter shots on both sides. He'll start in with the Queen. To wrap around the Town Hall or is he going in? Not sure yet. Not sure yet. But he will drive the queen off to the left here initially. No Tesla's popping in that area to mess with any pathing for the queen. Yeti down on the corner of the base over on the left side. And a jump to get him in. There's the first Tesla popping, but that won't be an issue. I'm gonna walk right in and go to the scatter shot. And then surge across the core of the base here with the super polars. He has the blimp that he can use to go take the town hall. Queen. Okay, stay with the pack here, Queen. Okay, she's going. She's going. Around the corner into the air defense. And here goes our entry. Clean funnel here. And he spent one minute on that initial setup, which is pretty solid as far as time goes. You put the king to go to the outside of the base there, which is to go to the outside as well. Not driving the king in at the moment, but the defensive king will help drive him into the base there. Header come down to support and skeleton spells up in the top corner. Probably see the World Champion come to the top edge as well. But he's got to make sure that Town Hall is going to go down first before he uses her. Looks like the Town Hall is engaged there by the Sneaky Goblins out of that CC. He takes out the Inferno in the middle of the base. There's Sneaky Goblins take out the Town Hall. And he's looking good here overall. Got the healers inside of the right there in the core of the base. The Super Polars seem to have gone down at this point. The King getting locked onto by the single Inferno. But he gives up that tanking or something else was targeted. I'm not sure which. 
One minute to wrap around. The world champion doing good work there while the king is providing lots of tanking. The queen is beating through the wall there with the help of the warden. They will step into this little loop that leads them out of the base, which can get them into the backside to join up the world champion. World champion still has her ability. Lots of force to take all the defenses to keep the world champion's HP preserved so she can handle this last corner. Looking good here overall. Two freeze is still intact. It looks like he's got enough here, guys. It looks like Alec will lose all of his healers here as he closes out, but he'll have plenty of force to close it out without him. Freeze up the bomb tower on the backside, and he'll just fight through some grass skellies with 30 seconds plus. He will have plenty of time to close this one out and match the triple that was put up from Tribe Gaming. All right. Nice way to start off this finals match. Time right, to score. Luxy is live. Luxy coming in with a Sui Lalo. Got a lot of skeleton spells here. He used the skeleton spells to tank for the king and the queen as they make their way into the left side of the base. Driving through the defensive queen and three single infernos on this base will be shielded by the skeleton spells as he makes his way through this initial area. But he's, needed, he's gonna need to get the CC pull here shortly. There's the king pulling it. A Lava Hound comes out, so we can find out the Lava Hound. But he has uh, a single Inferno still being distracted by the skeleton spells. The king is not getting locked onto by it right now, but he's got the Walper to get him past into the next compartment to go south, and the queen will continue beating on the Hound. The world champion comes in after the defensive king is out of the way and will slip in there and get that eagle artillery out of the way the hound pops the king finally gets locked in by the single inferno but the poison well placed there catches all of the pops and they collapse even deeper into the poison and will all go down he still holds her ability she should be able to get that single inferno down and she should be able to get down a majority of the tesla farm here as well the world champion just grabs up the eagle artillery and here we go with the lalo Three compartments there cleared with the heroes. The queen survives and will keep on moving. Her ability will pop now, and she hopefully will be able to reach over the wall and get that sweeper out of the way. Get it? it will stop knocking him back while he approaches the town hall. There we go. He locks on that sweeper now. The hound pulls a whole bunch of red air bombs up ahead there, clearing the way for the blues to make their approach. Range up, freeze up, and take that town hall down. The hound deploys was over the right side. Need some blues to support it, though. There they come now, but the Town Hall Poison is tearing him up. Where was his Warden? Where was your Warden ability there, Fluxy? He finally pops it now, but I think it was forced. Is the Warden not standing in position? Ooh, that's a bit of an issue. That is a huge issue here because he's got so much on the backside. His Queen has slowly got topped off by the Unicorn. She did find some safety in there, but the Slammer opens up, drops in the Rage to get it through to the Scattershot. It does take the Scattershot down. That's a chance here. Still a single Inferno, though. Blooms will clear out the top defenses in the upper part of the base, but the air defenses still stand. Warden goes down. Queen still moving. The haste needs to carry these blooms into the single inferno. If they take that single inferno, he might have a chance. Get the shots, get the shots. Queen steps around. Oh no. Oh no. I don't know what happened with this warden. Was his warden standing back so he couldn't pop it? I want to go back and re-watch what happened with the warden there. Because if the warden was in standing position, and that's why he didn't pop the ward ability, then that would explain why we just saw what we saw. But if he just forgot to press the ward ability to protect the balloons, and that's another story, that would have been a user error rather than an AI error that tried to screw him. But a 93% here for Tribe Gaming will close that attack out. Let's go look uh, at that attack. I just want to fast forward all the way up to that point there and see what happened with that warden. So, the warden was standing back and attacking the storage. He raged up, he froze up. The warden was standing away from the balloons. He finally stepped forward and it was not fast enough there to save the balloons from the blast. So that cost him the triple there. And the warden definitely threw that attack. There was not a player error. That was purely the AI screwing him over on that one. We got alive on the other side of here. Nechoa is coming in with a Kill squad into Lalo using the wall wrecker. Wall wrecker driving in with the heroes as they work their way into the artillery. That drive the queen into the base there. I think she's ended up circling north. The king went way south on the base here. Not even attack a wall and go in there. So the world champion kind of left stranded there with the expos continuing to chip away there. The king tanked the expos for a while. 
Pop that queen ability, get through the headhunters and the defensive queen. No, he doesn't even need to do that. The headhunters were able to slip through there. They raged up. Yetis come out of the wall wrecker and push all the way to the core of the base. They'll jump the wall and get the sweeper down. Just one of them for now. Does he get the other one too? Another shot there from the Yeti Mites. They're going to jump out and they go to the Battle Builder. Take it out. Okay, that works. We're a champion going after the other scatter shot and sweeper combination. Well, the Queen can do survive on the left side. Her Unicorn standing off to the side. So the Unicorn's not actually getting targeted. He'll pop that Queen ability, break the wall, and get to the other scatter shot. Holy value out of these heroes. But there's still a very dense area on the left side of the base here for this Lalo to have to make their way through. Test Farm pops on the left side corner. We'll be ending right onto this town hall. Freeze up the single inferno. Freeze up the town hall. Pop some red air bombs. It did not hit the balloons. Hound out on the side there tanking. He's got his warden cooperating though. They get the force into the town hall. Continuously freezing it all the way into this approach here. Red bombs going out there. There's that ward ability. He's got the haste of carrying out of the poison and into the final defenses. And he can throw down everything else for cleanup. He's knocked this one out of the park here. Nachoa will put MS Esports into the lead with this attack here. Two Lalo attacks, one Warden cooperates, the other one doesn't, and that right now is the difference of this war. GG, buddy. Rikiris is live from Tribe Gaming. Coming in with a Blizzard Lalo by the looks of it here. Is he going after the channel here? I was thinking maybe he dropped into that channel and wall break it open. But no, he's going to the town hall here. He'll land on top of the defensive warden and the wizard tower, nuke out the town hall, pulls the CC, the air defense, and a really solid funnel out of this as well. Picking up that warden with the next shot here and then work his way down south. He'll clear the defenses out to the edge of the base and actually get some additional shots after that. Not going to waste his last invisibility. The super wizards will just save that invisibility for the queen or the road champion, whoever needs it. Once you have the value, there's no point in continuing to drop spells there onto troops that are not going to get anything else of significance. Save those spells for more critical groups. But he'll send in a super wall breaker over the far right side of the base. Go into the Eagle Artillery area. By the way. He sends in a sneak goblin over there as well. What are you doing there? He uses a baby dragon to fight the CC, poison it up. Is he putting the heroes in the top of the base or into the scatter shot? The king comes down, but he. Finds a test farm right out of the gate there. That couple of blues companies trying to keep the king up on the north side here. He puts in the word champion down south. A skeleton spell comes down to provide her some protection. A shield drive in there. The baby dragon even assisting on her push in. The header comes down to get him through the defensive king and the defensive world champion. Power through those. Another wall breaker to get him into the eagle artillery compartment. And hopefully this king actually breaks the wall and goes to the multi-inferno, but wait, no, the Road Champion is in charge of that, so no, definitely push the King north and keep the tanking in position for the Queen as she drives her way through the Eagle Artillery. So far, so good. Road Champion getting some really, really excellent value across the middle of the base there. He's not going to have enough to push all the way to the multi-inferno, but the Queen will survive, and he can deploy his warden on the left side to get the best angle of approach here towards the defensive Queen. There's more hounds, more balloons. He can pop the warden now as the headers deploy and the scatter shot locks onto the balloons. Also protect him from the multi inferno. This is perfection all the way through. Rikera is one of the best Lalo attackers in the world. Is gonna get it done again. He's got plenty of spell support here. Overwhelming Lalo. His queen even surviving till the end. He'll freeze up that last inferno and then swag his invisibility. He's knocked this one out of the park here. And he'll just clean up here. He's got clean up everywhere. It's absolutely a triple and that will put the pressure over to ms esports to keep their trickles their triple streak rolling into their third attack nice job kingsman is live with super barbarians mixed into a a hog miner hybrid this is kingsman attack of choice Loves this attack. He's very, very good with it. He'll drive in his queen towards the town hall. Be able to reach a bomb tower from that compartment. Will but eventually get some tanking onto the scatter shot here. But a lot of these attacks are there's a lot of different ways to take down bases. Like, I wanna just quickly say that during my clan war leagues this month, we had a war that every single player was town hall 14. We were running pal 12 to 14. 
and every single one of our opponents was running the exact same base. And we found, independently, we found about 10 different ways to take the same exact style base down with different uh, accounts and even the different styles of two-star attacks there from our Town Hall 12s. Like, there are so many different ways to take a base down, and it's more about just maintaining proficiency in what you're comfortable with and just finding an attack that you enjoy and that you're good at and then mastering it. Absolutely mastering it. And that's what Kingsman has done with the Queen Charge Hogminer hybrid. He has become the player that does this attack and nobody can stop him. But he'll go in with the invisibility to lock up this CC and get through to the single inferno, protecting the queen for as long as possible. The Ice Golem tying her up for just a moment. She may need to go into another freeze here. He goes with the freeze onto the single inferno and the queen does survive and will continue on to the defensive queen into the bomb tower and then eventually at least take the Scattershaw shot on the other side of the base. But the king collapses his way into the Eagle Artillery. He's already got the funnel up there. The king will work his way in. He's got probably hogs inside of his siege bricks. It'll be deployed and trickled out later on while the wizards just bombard behind this king and give a ton of extra firepower. Here comes the hogs. They're going right to the core of the base here. The champion working right behind the pack there, staying protected. He'll ward abilities. He approaches the defensive king. The queen is, as expected, tanking the scatter shot, but she gives up the tanking for just a moment and makes her way around the wall and comes back to it. She gets the tanking back now as the troops that were inside of the... Inside of that... Uh, what did I lost the scatter shot? That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> End up dying out or going north out of the range there. But everything else is circling around. He's got 30 seconds left. He's still got an RC ability. The queen breaks the wall. She steps in, will drop out the scatter shot and work her way into the cleanup here. He's got plenty of cleanup. He's got the wizards along the outside and he's got his road champion and warden still intact. They will clear out those grand scale. He's searched their way to the right side. He's got 10 seconds left to wrap up the last couple of abilities, which is plenty of time. And he will get the triple and maintain a perfect streak here for MS Esport. Oh, those healers were really weakened up there by that town hall. They took a lot of damage right there. But right here, after he fought through the CC, the minion that was helping clean up the pups surged his way forward and took out all of those red bombs. And that was huge right there. Huge amounts of value out of that minion. Not only help clean up the pops, but also triggering all those traps in front of the queen and protecting her healers so she ended up going the whole way. But here we go. Nebrox is live with a zap into Lalo. He'll zap out the defensive queen and the inferno. Go for any additional value past that, but he'll send in the blimp to pull the CC and it is going to be a Yeti bomb to nuke out the scatter shot, the air defense, and the expo. Get that CC pulled in full. And he might get that bomb tower as well. Yep, okay. Oh, get the archer tower too. Okay, really good Yeti value bomb. Yeti bomb value. That's the word. That's, I got all the right words. I just put them in the wrong order. He'll drive into the bottom of the base here with the archers and a wizard to go fight off the CC. The wizard and a baby dragon will fight off the headhunters and now pop the hound. And he can search his way across with the heroes. Now, I imagine he wants to have at least the... Some of the heroes go to the town hall, but no, he's actually going to drive the heroes in opposite of the town hall, not go along the path that he has created to make his way towards the town hall. He's going after the scatter shot, the defensive road champion, and the eagle artillery instead. But the baby dragon and that wizard will continue along the left side of the base there. We'll pick up some good value of them. That baby dragon is actually going to keep going for days. It'll probably survive that wizard tower unless it's black mine and pick up a lot of cleanup on the back end. But the world champion joins in with the king and the queen on that right side. Wizards follow her up as well. She's taking a lot of damage there from the expo, though. Artillery strikes there. Miss a little bit there as the king ducks inside of the range, but he'll wall to go even deeper in the base. Holy value here. The heroes are crossing through the whole base. He got the sweeper down with the RC ability, and now he can charge in the Lalo through the town hall. They'll need the Warden to cooperate here. We saw the Warden do them dirty on the previous attacks of the war. We'll see if that happens again. They make his approach. He's got one freeze. Now he's got another freeze out of this. He's got an Ice Hound as well. This Ice Hound's going to pop right into the Town Hall, potentially. Yes, it freezes up the Town Hall. 
and that'll give him even more time to work here. Warden's in position. He will take the Town Hall down, haste his way out of the poison, and the freeze on the back end will get him through a little bit further. Wait, we already used it. Where did he use it? I didn't even see. But he has more blooms on the left flank there. His queen is still alive. He's got one more bloom. Drops in the rest of his minions around the edge of the base there to pick up the remainder of the defenses, and he does get the triple here. It is... Another triple for Tribe Gaming, but they're still waiting on a defense. They gotta stop up somebody from MSE Sports. But both of these teams are playing at the top of their game today. GG. And what a war. The only thing is keeping both of these teams from being perfect right now is one slip up of the Warden AI. Not even a player mistake. All right, here we go. Synthe is live. If you guys missed Synthe playing in the Creative Master series in our last video, you should definitely go check that out there. He did a 69 Hog Rider attack in his uh, Creative Master series attack, and he did a 42 Rocket Blood attack, and he did a, was it 56 Headhunter attack? He did some crazy, crazy stuff playing against stars in the Creative Masters, and if you missed out on the video, then definitely go check it out after this one here. It was an absolutely insane war between him and Stars. But today, he's going in with the Flame Flinger towards the Town Hall. He's got the bats and the skeleton spells taking out the Inferno in the middle base. They're also grabbing out the CC. The Quake activates the Town Hall so the Flame Flinger can lock onto it and take it down. Got an Expos on behind it, but they will be able to outrange that for now. And keep this Flame Flinger nice and safe. The hero's coming from the bottom of the base. We'll not have to deal with the CC, and with the Multi-Inferno already removed here, we'll drive into the other Multi-Inferno where Champion will come down to go get the scatter shot off of his flank, and his heroes will make their way in and deal with the defensive queen. The single Inferno is burning up his king right now. That's not ideal. He does get the Town Hall down, and the Flame Flinger will continue to pick up value up on the top edge there. Get ready for the Lalo to start soon. Maybe you want to time the Lalo beginning with the flame flinger opening up here but he continues to push the world champion through her wisdom invisibility she still has her ability she will be able to pop her ability and get through these battle builders here and drive into the single inferno a little bit easier but i don't know if she's gonna have enough punch to actually take the single inferno without having to burn freezes into it see how far she can go he burn a freeze yes he does he will he will best the freeze there get the single inferno down does get the grand expo down as well okay i'll start the lala from the bottom and he'll just let whatever's inside of the flame flinger pop out, but it's still staying safe up there, continuing to pick up value. He's actually lolloing from both ends of the base there simultaneously. He will get the support for whatever comes out of the flame flinger. He surged his way into the bottom of the base just to go after the eagle artillery, but the bulk of his army is coming in from the right side. Warden ability protects the headers onto the defensive world champion. Freeze up the scatter shot as soon as it loses his tanking. And if that goes down, he's absolutely got it. Rock includes out of his CC. Does hit the Tornado Trap and a bunch of red bombs there, but he does have more than enough force here to charge his way in and take out the remainder of the defenses. And MS Esports is not letting up, guys. They are one triple away or an attack above 93% from locking in the grand finals position to move on to face the Queen Walkers. This was a overkill attack here. Beautifully done here from Synthe. The path to victory for Tribe Gaming is a triple here and then holding the final attacker from MS Esports, which will be Uriam, to a 93% or lower. But Kronos going in with a zap into Pekka Smash. He's got a Flame Flinger select at the moment. He zapped out the Expo and he could actually pair the Quake that he used to activate the Town Hall with that Lightning. Combined with taking out the Expo so that the Flame Flinger can make his way into the Town Hall and he will start to push his Flame Flinger towards that direction while the Queen pulls the Warden north and that Flame Flinger will secure the Town Hall outside the range of the Expo, hopefully. Hopefully he never steps inside the range. Hopefully he doesn't path weird, but he should be in a good spot there to drop the Town Hall and then deliver some back-end support after the pack of Smash charges through the core of the base. Love to see this. I love this attack. It is such a cool way to set up with the lightning to set up the other phase attack there while also getting the double purpose out of it to set up that flame finger. Very, very powerful, simple, and effective way to take these bases down. There's the ward abilities. He charges his way through the eagle artillery, pops the defensive lava hound. 
which is where come the outside, but they're ducking in after the defensive king. They may end up turning back to the outside. They do, okay. It is uh, distance from that multi in in the middle of the base there. Baby Dragon down the line. A way to push those witches back into the base there, but just trying to provide some extra external support there. But the healers are in a good spot. He's staying out of the range of that multi inferno. The flame flieger is working on taking the town hall down. His Royal Champion is still on standby. He puts in the headhunters to send into the defensive Royal Champion. But they end up dying. He has plenty of force there, so I'm not too worried about it. He'll rage up, and hopefully the healers step in the right there and get these Pekkas topped off. They're critically low HP right now. They do step in, but they lose the Pekkas anyways. The World Champion pushes through the core of the base. They're right as the Town Hall is about to drop. She will get that multi inferno down, engage the defensive World Champion. Would love to see a Headhunter over there. He'll freeze it instead. Single Inferno locks on. He goes invisible, but he misses the invisibility. Defensive World Champion stays standing, but the, the multi went down. He didn't get some damage onto the multi or the single photo though, but the witches are beating on the wall to try to go in there. The ward is chipping at him right now. The queen is attacking the wall as well. He's got Dragonbiter and Blooms out the back end, and Kronos has got it! It's a triple! They've done what they needed to do! And it'll put the pressure on the final attacker from MS Esports. One miss the entirety of this war, and it was because the warden AI did him dirty, but this triple gives him a chance. They gotta stop Uriam. Here we go. The pressure is on. Uriam is live. He's got a queen charge zap into dragon riders here. Going with six lightnings and a quick. Lots and lots of spell investment. To take out this expo and the single inferno would like to catch the damage on the defensive road champion while he's at it. So wait for her to circle into position here. While the Queen makes her way in, now would be a good time to zap. Hopefully he's paying attention to the Defense World Champion's position. He passes by. Queen, where is Queen going? She's going north. Expo locks on, but still very minimal amounts of damage here. He does seem to want to go north here, so he'll throw in the Sneaky Goblin. He gets a CC pull. He zaps the Defensive World Champion and caught the Headhunters out of the Defensive CC. Doubling up on a spell there. He will not... Hit the Town Hall with the Quake. He does not want the Town Hall activating while the Queen's healers are nearby. And he does not want to waste any spells that he could use to protect the Queen here. So he'll pass the Town Hall. He's got a blimp that he can go in to take the Town Hall down. The Queen steps in. She gets the defensive header down. Locks on the defensive world champion. Takes her down as well. Rages up. Will pop the Hound. Defensive... Road Champion will drop, and he's got Headhunters to get down to the Defensive King as well, while his Road Champion joins in for the right side, but the Poison is perfectly placed there. Catches all but about three pups that went out to the Healers. The Queen, he's on the multi inferno while he blimps out the Town Hall. The Healers are safely distanced from that Town Hall, and they will take it down there. A couple Black Mines go off. That's less Black Mines. The Dragon Runners will have to take on later in the base. So this Road Champion is starting to get low on HP. She still has her ability, though. He'll send in... The, the Dragon Runners at the top of the base there. The Headers come down. They will support and get through the Defensive Queen. Even freezes up that area. His Royal Champion, after popping ability surges all over the core of the base, they will grab out that multi inferno. I would love to see a healer transfer over the Royal Champion, but it ain't gonna happen. Dragon Runners will step in and finish the job with the Royal Champion left off and push their way in to the last corner of the base. This is the entirety of this war is on these Dragon Riders as they continue to push their way through. The Queen is gonna switch walls and go back to the internal compartment of the base. He's got balloons on the left side there. Gonna try to collapse into this air defense. The Dragon Rider split over there, but they're all at low HP. They will get that air defense down. They keep on pushing. He's got it crossed 93% to lock in the win. Queen makes her way back to the middle of the base there. She reaches over the wall there, grabs out the Grand Warden, protecting the cleanup. Will grab out the Sweeper. He has this storage in here that is picking off some of the cleanup with the Wizard Tower, but he's pushing through. 91%, 92%, 93%, and Uriam with the triple and the win! MS Esports! Going perfect this war. The queen breaks the wall, steps through, and he will take the triple and the perfect. MS Esports does not let up. And they will advance to face the queen walkers in the grand finals. Guys, that was an absolutely insane war. And if you enjoyed it and you want to help support the channel, then do so 
by using code Eric. You can pick up the awesome, awesome new scenery pack there. The shadow scenery pack there along with this crazy new warden skin in your shop right now. It is a legendary skin. It's a limited time offer in the shop there. So don't miss on it. You're not going to have another, another opportunity to pick it up. And uh, that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe channel for more. And we'll see you in the next one.